Okay, so um, I'm done with the with the winding. This is the last pair, P28. Right here is this, uh, the south. Right here is the north. And we look close to it. We'll notice that the bisector of north uh, 28 is right here, as the bisector of uh, of south uh, P28 is right here. So this closes right next to it, the the loop. Uh, if you could picture what when we started this, um, right here way in the back and we went this way and come all the way from here and end here it uh, and you put this into a graphic it's it looks like a spiral it's like a like a like a spiral that comes here and then closes the loop right next to it and uh, similar to a Fibonacci um, spiral uh, but that we have to make sure that we have the close-up perfect so it takes over and then it creates this looping endless rotation um, of sequences um, 28 sequences now I have already started putting the hedges on it the hedges are come in a box um, they they have a, a specific uh, size and and uh, this one right here is uh, it's got a number on it and uh, I'll put it down on the forum um, the one I use a specific part number and the distributor I bought it from which is EIS uh, this is these are made uh, specifically for this uh, and what I do is they come square in the front and what I do is I I trim it in order to make it like this so it's easy to go in and I press them I get them uh, we have to use a little hammer and a piece of wood a, a little small block of wood and what I do is I before putting the the hedge on I like right here uh, let me get a close up here um, we see the wire getting in the way there so what I do is I tap it with the hammer right getting the corner get in the corner right here so I can get it a little bit now never hit the the metal with the hammer never after it's all epoxy and all that you crack the epoxy if you do that you separate the lamination so never use rubber if you got a rubber mallet it'll be better um, and use always wood in the in between when you're gonna tap wire never hit the metal with the metal I see will uh, also put bruises on the on the stress on the on the clear coat and that will let that that'll be a weak point right there so hammering it a little bit tapping it and on both ends so I can get it right in the center then I have another one that I have um, shaped the front the, the front of it I have sanded it down so I can make sure I go in the slots and I push it so when I go with the with the hedge it goes easier so I don't cut them, I put them in one piece and you can see how I can slide it in. Now there's not much room here to go with the pliers in there and pull it as you can also scra scratch the, the insulation but this is how we push it 
and it's not in, in, uh, a simple deal. You have to keep on tapping here while after you have um, sliding in, and that will ease the, the going in. You gotta have a better grip also. It goes in. Now the thing is that once that it if if you while you're pushing it, it bends, that's it. You gotta take it off and replace it. Because it doesn't have the strength already. And you gotta make sure that the grooves, the side of the hedge goes inside the area. Uh covering the wire. That there's no wire in between the hedge and the metal. Otherwise, there's no purpose of the hedge. The hedge is also an insulation from the wire. It, it prevents the wire to, from popping out, but also it prevents from the edges of the metal that could be scraped or because of the winding pressure to make contact there. So it is a, a, a needed in this type of motor uh, requirement that you have to push it and go in and as it goes in you have to keep pressing it and you gotta be patient this is not it is one by one okay and we got it Because of the camera, I, I don't have that much space with my arms here. Not to keep hit the camera, but I got it almost in. And so you can see it. I have to go uh, a little bit more until I reach here. And at the same time, they will be protecting from this ob above wire to go uh, out. So, this is just, oh, okay, I bent it, but I already got it in there. See what I mean? Once that you uh, bend it like that, once that you bend it like that, it's not good. Then you have to just... Uh, either pull it out or uh, if it is already in like this is the case then we just go bend it outwards you don't want to cut the wire when after you're done here you rather cry than doing this so do it when you have visibility that you're not cutting any wires this is the worst one that came out because of the camera filming it, but you guys have an idea. Uh, all of them I pushed them forward. But anyways, it's doing its job. Then later on, we just touch it in between here with some high temperature epoxy or glue. I'd rather put a clear, not the orange, so it looks uh, uniform. And normally, uh, then, then I have to go now and start doing all this uh, let me zoom back. Uh, you gotta go and, and, and start doing all this uh, uh, sealing of the elements and measuring. As I do the first pole, the first pair, I have to measure continuity. I have to measure that they're not touching ground. I have to touch the shaft and the element. If there is ground continuity, I have to go back and check. There's something wrong there. So I have to go into the pair. That's a big deal. So normally this gets done before. When you're winding the first pair, you check for continuity. You don't have to scrape both ends, just one, and check that they are not grounded. Okay, so you just go one by one and then keep going and sealing it both ways. Okay, so we're done. We got it all uh, done. I 
want to before getting it into the the, uh, the the starter housing I highly recommend to put dual layers of uh, masking tape around your winding basically on the part that is going in first because it's going to suck it so fast that you're not going to have control of it and it might kink the wire and this might prevent it uh, from happening and um, as you can see right here I have the commutators and I have my locks that are 16 gauge that I force them in there uh, see these commutators are designed for 16 gauge and I end up using 18 so the wire after you strip it it comes comes out kind of loose so the retainer I use it as a 16 gauge which I also strip it but I uh, use a specific chisel that I uh, file the edges in order that it could go in the slots flat and it, it will be able to you guys will be able to push the wire uh, and tap it a little bit tap it very very gentle and in position and that'll get you going I mean it's it's a lot of work it is a lot of work and I, I realize that but we'll see how worth it is okay I'm gonna be filming myself what I'm trying to get it in um, I'm gonna get my hand in the back to hold the armature and keep it in place and see how it sucked it. Now uh, I have to go back here and check. I don't think I put any damage on it, as you can see. Uh, but it did suck it real good. Now here we can play with it and pull the tape out put the armature on, the, the part with the brushes and our cap that fits here and we got it all ready to go we'll be uh, firing it up soon <laughs> 